Hey guys, um, as if I'm not already busy enough with the ICF and the pool game, I've got a wintertime project. It's kind of for the wife. Um, she loves to go camping. She loves the outdoors. She's actually in Tibet right now hiking, which is, you know, insane. But uh, she went back to see her parents in China for a month or so and spent a, a long weekend out there hiking in Tibet. So. She doesn't really love tents and stuff, not really the sleeping in them, but the setting them up, taking them down. And I've been looking kind of longingly at the future when I actually have time to enjoy myself. And I like the idea of a teardrop camper because we can pull it with her little Jeep or Kia. You know, we don't need my big diesel to, you know, haul a big gooseneck, fifth wheel, whatever. And I'd been looking around and I finally just bought a set of plans from Wander Tears. You guys probably see them. They spam the heck out of the internet, really well marketed. And they put it on sale. I bought it. I really bought it for the thought process that with my pool kits, I like to see what other people are doing in other genres and how well it is. And their plans are next level good. I was so impressed that I immediately got kind of Jones in to do a little welding. I've obviously got a gate that I'm supposed to be welding, but I figure today's a rainy day. It's kind of a throwaway. I already got my four pieces of two by two, 11 gauge steel. I'm going to weld up the trailer frame today, I think. I'm at least gonna cut it out. We'll see where I get. Um, I'm actually going to Nashville tomorrow to pour a pool with one of my uh, affiliates out there in Nashville. So this was really gonna be a winter build, but if I can get a jump on it and get the actual trailer, done up, but I will do a whole series. I may not release these for a couple months. I may just sort of get a bunch of them and start hitting them out uh, a piece at a time during the winter when we're not really in pool phase anyway. So I, yeah, guys, I can't tell you, I can't recommend the plans enough. We'll see how the build goes, but the plans are the most organized um, setup I've ever seen in a set of plans. I'm gonna do everything I can to make my pool kits that good this winter. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna cut this out. The plans call for three and a half sticks of uh, 20 foot two by two. Um, I got four sticks the other day, picked it up. He, the same guy's helping me get all of the, uh, the axles and the wheels and the, you know, the coupler and all that. But we'll get to that right now. We're just gonna weld up the frame. All right, guys. So first thing I have to do is just lay everything out, start cutting different uh, links. Everything's listed out really, really nice in the plans. You see that I'm using uh, the six and a half inch or maybe five and a half inch DeWalt um, circular saw that's made for cutting steel. Um, really, really impressed with that little saw. I'll link it in the description uh, for Amazon. But blade technology has gotten so good. Those Diablo blades that are made to cut steel, they don't even heat the steel up. It's cool to the touch as soon as the cut's done. Um, and there's hardly any grinding or prepping to get ready, um, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, obviously, you see me grinding some of the welds and stuff, but getting the thing square was uh, very uh, tedious because we wanted it within, you know, a 30 second of perfect. Um, and that saw made the cuts good enough that we were able to do that. Then I put all my cross members in. I welded the tongue, got the coupler on. Um, really wasn't a hard process. Took like an hour to weld it up, maybe an hour and a half. Um, you can see here I've got it all fitted up with the, uh, the jack. Um, something you'll see late, way later, probably eight episodes from now, is that the jack has to be moved because of the tongue box I bought. But um, little nuances like that that I ran into. But ultimately, it worked out really, really good. Um, but you can see here I've got it all primed just using automotive primer. One thing in the plans that was recommended... Um, they, they said you can paint it with just, you know, shaker can, Krylon, or you can use um, spray-on bed liner that you would buy in a kit. 
from like Amazon. Um, that was probably would have been a fairly durable option. I don't know that the bond would have been as good as I would have wanted, not to mention chemical resistance, salt resistance. So what I used was um, actually more expensive than that by a little bit, but it was um, an, a marine two-part aliphatic urethane. Aliphatic urethanes are like the highest chemical resistance you can get in a coating, um, and this was a marine grade. So you know, I could see myself camping at the uh, beach at some point, and this is going to make the uh, frame the most resistant to it. Um, really, really durable two-part aliphatic urethane. I think it was a couple hundred dollars a gallon, but I ended up having enough left over even after touch-up to do my whole gate. So ultimately, I got two projects for that gallon, and um, it was it was a really easy thing to apply. We just rolled it on with uh, weenie rollers and uh, went really, really smooth, and it kind of goes on a little bit uh, stippled like orange peel, but then it lays down really nice and smooth after a minute or two. And um, you got a little bit of a pot life issue. You got to get it on pretty quick, but just mix small batches and uh, and go. So really happy with this. Um, you'll see that unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't really know, the axles had not arrived yet when we did the paint. So we had to grind away some of the paint, do the welding, and then touch those welds up with, with a little batch after the fact. So um, you'll see that here in a second. We got the, uh, the Dexter Torflex axle and tires and wheels in. We mounted everything, got it perfectly, perfectly square. And you can see us here, this is all painted and done. But um, now we had to uh, kind of scrape off a little bit of paint around where the welds were, go ahead and weld it, and then go back and do it. We also had to uh, put paint on the axle. The paint that comes on the axle is uh, notoriously bad. I mean, it's effectively, they, they spray some black water on it, and <laughs> that's all that's left. So it would have gone bad pretty quickly, so we did use our aliphatic urethane over the axle as well later on. Um, he's not really as close to the tire as it looks, but we wanted it there for while he tacked it so that we knew we were perfectly, perfectly square with the frame and the um, fender wells that would, would be applied. And you can see here we flipped it over. He's welding the top a little bit, and um, I'm running the jacks up for the first time. These are the permanent jacks that actually stabilize the camper when camping. And we are, you know, I was actually not sure with these bigger tires and wheels that it was even going to get, make it where it could get off the ground. You don't need to get it off the ground when you're camping, but I was just purely curious. And it does, it lifts them up a little bit off the ground. So if I ever needed to change the tire, I wouldn't have to uh, actually carry a jack with me because it's got a built-in jack that will get it off the ground. So that's handy. Um, but guys, this system, this, uh, this version, they give the plans, give you three options of frames. You can buy one from Harbor Freight, assemble it. Then they recommend welding over all of the, um, bolt together sections. So it's more rigid. That's going to be your cheapest, but also kind of crappiest option. Um, it's just going to have really basic trailer tires and, um, not, not a ton of durability built into that. And then um, this was the frame with a an an axle or a you know a Torflex axle or a, they call it a semi uh, I, f I forget what they call it but I, I wanted this wasn't even one of their axle options in the in the but it, this was the axle option put it that way and then they have a Timberin axle option which is an end unit um, looking into how to get those they would have been a little bit more money than these um, by you know, two or three hundred dollars but also um, you know, my trailer guy who I trust a lot, my, uh, my steel supplier just advised against them. He's like, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're a little bit more service. They're a little bit more of this and that. And there's not a lot of upside. So I went with the Torflex, which a lot of my utility trailers have a bigger version of the same axle. And, uh, yeah, guys, it was not a hard setup to weld this up. And this is, I'm way better at the woodwork than I am at welding. Still think it turned out pretty good. You see here, it's all done and ready to head to the, um, uh, to the warehouse or to the shop for the woodwork and the the deck so that's the next thing all right guys so the trailer frame is done that was a phase of the plans they have it broke down into phases 
The trailer frame is basically ready to build the camper on now. Um, just to give you a quick synopsis of everything we did and the cost of it, because this video series is going to be about you buy a plan from you know this uh, company that I got the plans from, what's it really going to cost to build it, and what did I spend extra on to make it cool that you wouldn't have to if you were just really looking for a utilitarian version of it. So um, first things first, uh, the steel. The steel tubing for this, um, it was four sticks of 14 gauge, two by two, rec tube. It was $230.93, so, um, and then I had another $65.97 in just some random little pieces of steel, the angle, the uh, brackets that I had, and some other stuff. I was just a little short on, I had to go back and get. So, a little under $300, right at $300. Welding supplies, I had $42.86. I did not factor in any gas, I'm almost out, It's and I, I was almost out when I started and I managed to weld all this. So it wasn't much, I mean, I think it's a hundred bucks to fill one of those. I can't figure I spent more than 10 or $15 in gas. Um, a saw blade, you guys saw in that little time lapse that I was using that skill saw that's made to cut steel. It's about a $30 blade. It is not used up. They don't last forever, but it's still cutting really, really nice. But I factored in a brand new blade for this, $30. Trailer parts, that's the jack, the coupler, the, um, the jacks back here, and the fenders. Um, that's the, the, the mainly the parts that I got. And there's a, in the description, there's a, there's a spreadsheet. Um, there's a link to a spreadsheet. And um, just kind of showing you guys, this is you know, exactly what I had. The paint that I used, which I talked about a little bit um, in the voiceover, was an, a marine grade aliphatic urethane. So it's a super nice, paint. You can buy and they recommend buying um, bed liner like the Amazon janky little you know spray cans of bed liner. I was worried it would make the finish too thick for everything to fit tightly. Um, it's about hundred and thirty or hundred forty dollars I think for enough to do this. I spent two hundred and sixteen dollars and eighty six cents on one gallon kit of this but I think it's going to be more durable and a better finish. Um, I spent $20.90 and $69.81 at Home Depot on just supplies, mixing, uh, just Bondo, uh, got the fiberglass Bondo, the, um, just everything. It's, I'll, I'll, I'll link the receipt. Um, subtotal on all the parts, and I, I upgraded a lot of them. I got a nicer coupler, nicer jacks. Um, I got $1,736.37 in the frame. Um, then the axle and the tires, um, no, sorry, the axle and the hubs were already, I didn't say this, but I have $690 in the axle. That was part of the $1,700. $690 in this Dexter Torflex axle. It's a really nice axle for this. They give you three options. That's not one of them. They give you a half torsion axle, which you're kind of a pain in the butt to get. Um, the, in, the end units, they call them uh, timbrens. They're real expensive and they don't actually give you as much durability as these, I don't believe. And then just a regular leaf spring axle, which would be way cheaper than this. This was almost $700 for this axle. That's part of that $1,700, sorry about that. So that gets you to a total of $1,700 without the tires and the wheels. Obviously, I dressed up the tires and wheels way more than you have to. At a minimum, you could go to you know, a tractor supply and grab two four and a half by five lug pattern, 205, 75, 15 trailer tires mounted on a little white steel rim for 110 a piece, 220 bucks. I've got $1,255.83 in these off-road uh, tires, three of them, not two, because I'm gonna have a spare hanging on the side with the, uh, the, pretty, the pretty aluminum wheels. Like I said, this is kind of a showy thing. I want my wife to be able to pull this behind her future Jeep that she wants to buy. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's an expense you don't have to do, but for this trailer that you're gonna watch a series of videos on the build, it's a real expense, $1,255.83. Grand total on everything you see here, including the fenders that are I think off frame right now, uh, $2,992.20. Just to give you an idea, by the time you're seeing this video, the trailer's done, so you can see how it turned out. 
Um, these trailers base, uh, the, the company that sells the plans are selling them for $19,000 with the smaller tires and no upgrades. This one upgraded is probably $23,000, $24,000. So I've got three grand in it right now. Let's see where we get. I got a pretty good idea. I've got a goal and I got a pretty good idea what it's actually gonna be. So next video is gonna be building the floor of this. That's the next step uh, on it and then the, cab the cabin and the cabinet. So that'll be like the next two videos in the series. Woodwork, which um, is kind of my, uh, my roots. We're gonna take this thing over to the wood shop where uh, for one, I can hide it from my wife because this is a surprise for her. And uh, I'm leaving tomorrow to go to the Vegas pool show, then to meet her in Norway, which sounds incredibly crazy and lavish and not myself at all. But we're gonna have a little vacation. She's on her way back from China. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go hide this from her so I can finish it up over Christmas. Hopefully have it ready for the uh, spring season. If you're seeing this at the right time, you know I made it. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be super cool, guys. Um, I can't wait to bring it all to you. It's a little off of uh, the beaten path for what I do for content. But um, yeah, I'll be looking forward to bringing you the next, next week. We're gonna do the floor.